take a look. Okay, so a lot of response for B, an action potential travels all the way down an axon. Where does a graded potential travel? And although option D looks tempting, nowhere, greater potentials do not travel, this is not true. Remember, they are still traveling, they are just dissipating as they travel. And so the correct answer is going to be B, as the majority of you selected. Um, so that is dendrites, cell body, and sensory receptors. In other words, that proximal receptive part of the neuron, right? The soma, the cell body, the dendrites that are receiving inputs and signals from other neurons. And so that is all the distance that we see those greater potentials travel. By the time that signal, as weak as it may be, as weak as it, as weak as it is, by the time it gets to the axon hillock, it has completely dissipated. And so it is not going to lead to uh, or it could if it's strong enough, right? It could if it's strong enough lead to an action potential, but typically if it's not strong enough, it will dissipate by the time it gets to the axon hillock. So it does travel. I don't want you to think that they don't mm. travel. It's just that they dissipate as they do so. Alrighty. Okay. And then just to kind of point out here, C would have been the option if we were speaking about an action potential. It goes all the way down the axon. <clears throat> Let's look at another question here. I think we've got two more. Okay, final 10 seconds. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so I kind of suspected this. Now, this is not something we spoke about, but by process of elimination, you should have gotten to the right conclusion, okay? We have described the action potential as being the exact same. So all action potentials are the exact same amplitude. We can never increase the amplitude of an action potential. It will never go beyond that positive 30. All action potentials are the exact same duration. We can never increase the time of an action potential, okay? They're exact mirrors of each other. So the action potential is always the same amplitude, always the same duration. Okay, and so by process of elimination, right, that excludes A, C, and D, the only thing that we can do to send a signal, of, to send a signal of a stronger stimulus is increase the rate of action potentials. How many of them are we firing per a given time? Okay, so again, this is more of a trickier question because we didn't actually speak about the frequency of action potentials. We will speak about that coming up, but I really want you to really um, I really want to reiterate these two ideas of the action potential that we've already spoken about. And so by process of elimination, you should have been able to eliminate C and you should have been able to eliminate A. We can never change the amplitude of an action potential. We can never change the duration of an action potential. And so the way that we send a signal, so for example, um, we can distinguish loud sounds versus quiet sounds we simply manipulate the number of action potentials that we fire. We can manipulate a hot stimulus versus a cold stimulus. We can manipulate a strong, um, so a st if we're lifting something very heavy, that's gonna be a lot of action potentials. If we're lifting something very light, that's gonna be very few action potentials. So the only thing we can do to send different types of stimuli to grade, to grade our stimuli, if that makes sense, um, is to manipulate the number of them that we fire in a given time, right? The frequency or the weight of those action potentials. All right, um, let's look at one more question. 
and then we will call it a day. Last few seconds here. Okay. So kind of a mixed response here, B and D. During repolarization in an action potential, what happens to the membrane permeability of sodium and potassium? And so we know that sodium stops moving. So its permeability decreases right, those channels close. And remember, permeability is a reflection of the channels that are open. Um, potassium's permeability increases, okay? So the correct answer here would have been B, which I think I've, quite a few of you selected. Permeability of potassium increases, permeability of sodium decreases as they flip-flop in order to reestablish the resting membrane potential, okay? And then 